Hello, my most adventurous artists, and welcome to Miss Ianson's, that's right, you guessed it, Monster Week. We are going to be creating monsters all week long, and I really hope that you can join in and create some amazing artwork with me. Once you've created your amazing artwork, please share it with me, because it makes me so happy to see people creating some amazing artwork. So, this is what you're going to need to be able to make my friend my scary monster in a city and you're going to need some white paper or anything to draw on at all, a pencil for sure and if you can get something like washable markers that would be great. If you don't have washable markers anything like crayons, wax crayons, pencils, whatever you have available. If you can get yourself some water and a brush and a sharpie. If you don't have those things do not worry because honestly you can create some amazing artwork with just a pencil. So stay tuned and let's create this amazing artwork. You're gonna find that we have created a monster sheet. This sheet is for you to be able to create your monsters if you're struggling to come up with some ideas. However, I know you guys are a genius, which means that you guys can come up with some amazing monsters all on your own. But like I said, these are here for you to guys to use if you need them. So please feel free to print them off and use this as a starting point. Let's get started. Hello, my adventuring artists. This week in Miss Ianson's art room, we're gonna be focusing on the theme of, that's right, you guessed it, monsters. I can't wait for you to join me in creating some amazing pieces of artwork. The first thing you're gonna need is a piece of paper. Second, some markers. And third, that I mentioned is just if you have it. If not, don't worry, get ready to create, and let's get going. See you in a minute. Hey guys, so the first thing you're going to want to find when we're creating this amazing piece of artwork is a piece of paper. We're going to use that paper to create the artwork. If you don't have a cereal box or, I don't know, some old scrappy paper from an old photocopy, that's absolutely fine. Even an envelope opened up can make some great art material. Grab yourself some coloring pens markers even, and they want to try and be water soluble, which means they're washable. My brand um, markers you'll find are actually like that, so they'll be perfect. Then what you want to find is yourself a regular pencil, and if you have one, a Sharpie and a paintbrush. These two things though, if you don't have them, don't worry about it, because honestly, we can do without. Right, so here is amazing monster cityscape. I've created this great little handout for you guys to use to kind of come up with some ideas if you're struggling to think of different ways of creating your monsters over the next week. You should be able to find this underneath on my YouTube channel and also uh, you guys can access this to print off if you want to. So that's my little guide right there. Now, to put the first thing we need to do is start thinking about creating our city. So I'm going to put my little friend over here and we're going to get this paper. Now my paper is inside a, I think I got a sketchbook. It's quite thin paper, um, but this will be perfect for what we're creating. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use a Sharpie. You can use a pencil um, just so that you guys can see this nice and strongly. If you want to start with a pencil though and trace over your lines afterwards, you can pause this video at any time to make this easy for you to keep up with. The first thing I want to do is create my cityscape along my skyline right here. We're going to create our city or our buildings by creating an arrow shape like this. Here's my arrow. Draw my lines down like this. This is going to make my um, city look like it's 3D or give it some form, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to create another building right here. I might make a tall, skinny building shape. Oops. It's a little bit thin in the bottom, but that's okay because everybody makes mistakes and so long as we're having fun, it really doesn't matter. Now my next shape, I want to I want to make my skyscraper have a round top, so I'm going to make it this shape. All the way down, another arrow. Connect my lines together like this. 
Let me make it a little wider one right here. Oops. And then let me make it like this. And my last one, just on the edge, I'm going to make it an arrow one too. So you guys can see it. Now, if you are drawing with a Sharpie, make sure you have something underneath. I always use my messy mat so that I make sure I don't make any messes on my table. Now, the next step is we want our monster. I want my monster to be ginormous, floating in the background somewhere back here. So it looks like he's coming towards my city. Um, so what you could do, if you want to, is use that cheat sheet that I created. Or you can just come up with your own monster for yourselves in the background. I'm thinking I want to kind of make a coming over the top right there. You might not be able to see the whole monster, but that's okay. So I'm going to try and create my monster right here. And I want him to be, I'm going to make him a round shape this time. My last one was a bit more like a jelly bean. And I want to create a big eyeball or I'm going to go for, let me have a look across my cheat sheet right here. The last time I did it, I did this guy or something similar. I might do some little ones this time. So I'm going to create some little eyeballs using a circle shape. Nice. I'm going to have it so he's looking in lots of different directions. There we go. And then maybe one more set of eyeballs. <laughs> he looks kind of funny, right? Now, I want him to look kind of happy. I don't want him to look too... Is I'm going to actually give him a smiley face. You might not be able to see the whole of his smiley face, but... We could do it behind this building. So, for example, I might just have my smile coming up here. There he is. To up here. Behind that. Now, you can add lots of details to your um, monsters if you want. There's like things like on my help cheat sheet, there's some kind of eyeballs that stick up. There's um, some little specks of hair. You could even, if you want to, you could make it into like a girly model on her hair like that. Oh, yeah. She definitely looks like she's about to come and have a great time in the city. Okay, so now I have created my monster. Now I've created my city. I want to add some details to my city to make it feel a little bit unique and a little bit more. Use different types of lines, which is an element of art, to create different patterns on our cities. So, for example, I might create on this one, I might do some stripes coming down. I'm using a vertical line thing, just like that. And on this side of my building, I might do a diagonal line. Now, if I want to make my buildings look realistic, this line and this line should be something called parallel. Parallel mean parallel. Sorry, I nearly said something completely different. Parallel lines would never touch if we continued them on for a long, long time. So, I'm making them parallel to each other, all the way down the side of my building. Oops, that's okay. Alrighty, my next build in this one, it wants to be, each building wants to be unique. So, on this one, I actually might create some square windows. And we want this line and this line to be, that's all right, parallel. That way our buildings look three by windows nicely all the way down my building. And remember, if you want to pause the video, you can, although I do like to take my time. So making these all the way down right here. Oops, maybe we could, that looks good to me. Now on this side of the building, I want to do something slightly different from these edges. I might actually make some triangle shapes on the side of this building. Little shapes are all very important in a minute. 
Now, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to show you what this looks like once I've done all my different designs on my buildings. See you in a second. Now let's see some monster magic and let's see what happens. Monster magic. Boom! All finished. I love it. I created lots of different patterns and designs onto my cityscape on my buildings. They came out great. I hope you guys have managed to keep up. If not, just pause that video and take your time to create lots of different designs. You can see that on my own different squares, some different, it kind of looks like Tetris. I even created some wavy lines on this building right here just to kind of add some different details. Now, once you get to this stage and you've drawn your city, the next step is you want to take yourself or a regular normal pencil and we're going to try and create our city and make it look and feel a little bit more realistic. To do that, we're going to use the side of our pencil right here, not the pointy end, to do something called shading. Now when we shade, we can press really and get some really dark tones. We can press it down kind of like medium and get some medium tones like this or we can press it lightly and get some light tones because those three different tones dark mid mediums and light tones to give our city a real 3D feel or some form. So the first thing you're going to do is decide where is my sunshine coming from in my in my drawing. I'm going to pretend on my drawing that I'm from over here. That way I know that when I shade my buildings in, I want to make sure that my shadow is always on the same side. So my big shining sun is right here. That means that this part of my building would be lighter than this part. So I'm going to shade this whole side of my building in a light or a medium tone all the way down right here. Whereas on this side of my building, I'm going to press a little bit harder to create a dark tone. Just like this. So my sun. I know what I can do. I can put my amazing little cup right here and pretend that's my sun. There's my sun. It has a really cute little plant in it. There we go. So, now that I have my cup here, which is my sun, I'm going to make this side a little bit darker because this side would be in the shade or in the shadows. And I'm using the side of my pencil to create that darker shade. Like this. all the way on that side of the building it wants to be a little bit darker there we go that's the right level of darkness so now what i've got is i've got my 3d form really making it look like a realistic building i need to press dark right down here Get my shade in, all the way to the bottom. And then this part right here, now because I have the option to use Sharpies, what I could do is I could actually color in some of these parts with my Sharpie, or what I can do is I can actually make it look like a different side from the part on the top and the bottom to make the building look a little bit unique and different. Let me see right here. I quite like that, yeah. And what I could do is, on this one, I can do the same thing. So I want to make sure that my building on this side is lighter and my shade or my shadow is in the side, not in the sun. So again, this one's going to be my, this side of the building is going to be my mid or light tone. Remember those tones are up here, so if you guys forget, they're right there. Um, let me see. Finish my shading using the side of my pencil. I'm making sure we don't leave any snowflakes. That's what I call those little white bits on our paper if we accidentally miss those when we're coloring. Make sure we're happy with it. There we go. I like that. That looks pretty cool. Now this side of my building wants to definitely be darker because remember my flower pot is my sun and this side would be in the shade. So I'm going to press
all the way up to there. And then once we get this part of the building done, I'm going to show you the next step. Remember, you can always pause that video if you want to keep up. And you can also, you don't have to do this in um, a drawing pencil. You could do this in coloring pencil or you could do it in markers. Honestly, you guys, so long as you're having fun and creating artwork with me, I really, it doesn't matter what you use. So like I said, if you don't have the Sharpie, if you don't have the coloring pencils, or if you just have a couple of crayons and a pencil, or a pen even, go for it. Make art. Art is magical, especially at this time when everybody's stuck inside. It's great to make some fun artwork. So the next step on this one right here, I'm going to try and make this look a little bit unique. Yes, I want this side to be definitely lighter because it's in the sun. I want this side to be darker, but I have these kind of cool different shapes. So I might actually make some of these shapes a little bit different. So I might make this my light side, but I might make some of my shapes a little bit darker just to really add some unique elements to this. I'm taking my time. I'm coloring in them snowflakes all the way down like so. What I'm going to do guys is I'm going to pause that video and then like magic we'll be ready to go for the next step. Okay guys, the hand's back. That means that I must almost be finished with, oh my gosh, it looks so great. Okay, I'm missing one little bit. I miss this one right here and I did that on purpose so that you guys could put on these little zigzag sections right here and this top part. Now I've done that so that then what I can do is I can press lightly over the whole of the skyscraper background and that way it doesn't take as much time as if I was coloring in each individual section. Now remember when you're holding the pencil, try and hold, I usually hold it like this if I'm shading on the side of my pencil. If we were drawing, we would hold it like this, but because I'm trying to use the side of my pencil to shade, I'm using the side of my pencil like this. I'm really lucky because my pencil's really tiny. However, if you have a big pencil like this guy, you're going to want to use like so. And again, like this little one right here, making sure I'm coloring all of my, let me stay out of the way, my skyscraper in. We've got the little bottom part right here too. I'm going to take my time. Make sure I'm trying to make it nice and neat. All the way across, like so. Now you guys might think fast. I'm also really old, guys. I've been practicing my drawing and penciling skills for some time. Now, look at that. I'm so pleased with it. Let me get my plant by Jeff. Put him back over there. Now, look at that. I'm really pleased with the way that it came out. Now, we want it to look like that sun is coming up to that time of night where it gets a little bit dark. So to do that, we're going to create a sunset in the background of our drawing. For that, you're going to need three warm colors. Now, warm colors are those colors that make you feel warm. They remind you of things like fire or the sun or some colors are on one side of the color wheel. So if you know what your color wheel looks like, you could take a look. Now I have my warm colors right here in my toolbox. Let me take a look. So I have my orange. That's the warm color. I have my yellow. That's another warm color. And I also have red which is another warm color right here. So I'm going to use these three warm colors to create my sunset. The first thing you want to do is take your yellow. And if you have pencils, you can use pencils instead. The reason why I'm using markers is because I'm going to add some water to them, short of these into kind of like a paint technique. So my yellow or yellow pencil. Oh, this guy's running out a little bit, but that's okay. All the way across the top right here if you miss some gaps that's okay too now guys if you wow this guy's running out I want you to keep them the reason why I want you to keep them is a because they can be recycled which is super important for the environment but B 
you can actually get markers and make them into paints. And I'm going to show you that top tip later on. Now, said if you have any markers that don't work, keep them. Okay. Actually, I have a pile right here. These are my markers that are running low. I'm going to keep these guys and I'm going to show you what to do with them in one of my videos coming up that can make them into a paint, which is pretty cool, especially if you have lots of markers at home that are not very good and running out. Now, I have, and like I said, it was running out, but that's okay. Because I'm going to add water to this in a minute and it's going to create a paint. But before I do that, we're going to add our next warm color, which would be, you guessed it, orange. Orange. And I'm going to gently go over the top of some of my yellow, not all of my yellow, and all the way down towards the bottom of my buildings. And this is called blending. I am blending my colors together. Now, like I said, you can see that I am not being really neat with my markers. If you're using pencils, I would be a little bit neater. But because I'm going to do this cool trick in a minute, you're not going to need to be quite as neat as you would normally. And again, my markers are really low. Wow. I might need to get some more markers. Just like that. And, oops. Try and go around my monster too. Now, my last, oops, we should always put, hey guys, there's a little tip. And all my friends from Waterville School will know this tip. My markers are my friends. Personalities, and you guessed it, they have a head. Their head likes to be put back on their bodies. And when you do, you want to just listen for that click. Because that means that his head or her head has been put on correctly. And I was just about to leave these guys without their heads and they were going to get very upset. So let me just put this back. Click. That's how I know it's closed. So, get your next warm color, which is, you guessed it, red. And we are going to put the red along the bottom, right down here, of our cityscape or our skyline. All the way up here. Snowflakes. There's snowflakes all over inside my drawing right now. But that's okay because, like I said, we're going to be using a technique where we make this look like paint. So. And last but not least, all the way over here, give my monster a name. She looks a little bit like a daisy. I think we're going to call her Daisy. Daisy the monster. She looks like a friendly monster though, so that's okay. Alright, now I have my red and my orange and my yellows for my sky. That actually looks great just like that. I actually love the way that looks. So, here's the next step. If you have a paintbrush, if you don't, do not worry. You're going to use a paintbrush to paint the background with water. Oh! Oh, I tell you what, we should actually color in our... I'm gonna make Daisy green, I think. I want her to be a green color. I feel like she was meant to be green. So I'm gonna color her in nice and neatly. I forgot to mention we're gonna color her in first. Her eyeballs. I'm turn my paper sideways. Nice and neatly around the building. Around her head. No. Oops. Wow, she's got so many eyes. She reminds me a bit of a spider. So I'm trying to make my. Remember, we use our markers as if they were a paintbrush nice and taking our time and we are there good job okay so my daisy is looking cute she has a little bow on the top i might do that in a different color a blue color would be good let's get that oh she's so cute Alrighty. 
Daisy is done. Good job, guys. Now, remember, you can create whatever model using that help sheet. So don't feel like you have to create my little Daisy just like I did. Now, what we need to get, guys, is we need to get ourselves... We have a sponge in here. We don't want the sponge. Let me go to the sponge. We want to get ourselves a little cup of water. It's a little bit dirty because it has a sponge in, but it's absolutely the rest of it. Now, I'm going to take my paintbrush. I'm going to dip it into the water. And I'm going to be painting in the background of Behind Daisy on the warm colors. You can see that my paint, or sorry, my markers, when I add that water to them, are starting because they are water soluble or washable markers. And because they're washable, they react to the water and create this great paint. And I'm being really careful to stay around my skyline. And I'm being really careful to stay around Daisy too. So I'm starting to top here. Nice and carefully around the top of Daisy's bow. I'm going to go all the way across here. And this is great if you guys have markers that are running low. Or if you really just want to try a different technique. Oh wow, look how bright that became. Working all the way down here, taking my time. Oh, it's so pretty. And those colors are just blending together. Oh, wow. That's... Okay, I think I'm almost there. Now, everybody has different types of paper. If you try this technique, some people's papers will be um, very absorbent. That means they're going to take up a lot of water. Some papers won't be. If you have photocopier paper, you might need less water. So try it out maybe. And always try a little bit of water and then add more to it. You can always add more water. It's hard to take it away. Now that looks pretty, pretty perfect to me. All right. Let's see. What do you guys think to my monster cityscape? I love it. I think it looks amazing. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed creating these amazing pieces of artwork with me. I have my daisy picture that I created earlier, and I have my blue guy right here, too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this video for you guys to be able to take a look at, and once you guys create these along with me, because that would make me so happy. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. See you later. Bye.